Well, here we are, uh, PTA Global live webinar, talking about what a jungle it is out there. My name is Dan Duran. I am so honored and so uh, grateful to have Ian O'Dwyer, one of the PTA Global co-founders, on this uh, webinar with me. And uh, before we really jump in, I want to briefly do some housekeeping for those of you that maybe uh, it's the first time attending a webinar. Uh, just a few things and a little bit about the, the lay of the webinar. So you're all muted by default, right? So that we don't have a lot of background noise. We won't be able to hear or see you, uh, but we know you're there. And we have a list right here, uh, I do, that shows all the attendees. I'm really glad to see so many of you out there uh, tuning in. Uh, another thing that's important is we're gonna have some Q&A at the end, okay? So if you have some questions for and type them in the question box. There's a question box in your control panel that you can click on and that'll give you the ability to communicate with us. So please do that. Um, there's also a box that says downloads or handouts. Uh, click on handouts. We have several handouts in there, including some uh, instructions for registering for the exercise and stress management course. Again, was a huge part of creating, as well as a link to uh, SOMA, which Ian is going to be talking about, uh, the company that one of the many companies that he's co-founded, and uh, some, some more information on PTA Global, where to find some of our uh, videos. Uh, last thing is uh, make sure you stick around because after the webinar, within about an hour, you're going to get an email that has all of that information. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to just basically get this thing going because you don't want to listen to me talk again. My name's Dan Duran. I'm really proud to be a part of PTA Global and I'm really proud to have learned from some great people. Ian is one of those. Uh, Ian, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself for the, the listeners? Dan Duran, how are you, champion? It's so nice to be able to sit here in Noosa Heads, Australia at uh, 8.03 a.m. And, uh, and have a discussion with you. So, mate, uh, Ian Odawaya, what am I? I'm a uh, movement practitioner is what I classify myself is, as. Um, I have now been a, I've got a diverse background, I suppose, to what the typical people in the industry have had. Um, started off from a horsing background. And my dad was a was a horse breaker, a horse whisperer, um, amazing person with animals. You know, and I guess that really taught me about the observation, the connection, and really movement, which I didn't understand at the time would would come through all this part of my life. Um, and then went through a sporting history. My sporting was really cross country running, any sport really, tennis, basketball, but AFL, which is that aerial ping pong game that we play over here, mate, where you twist and you turn and you jump and you can kick the ball in any direction and handball. Um, and that was something that really taught me about tissue adaptation because I had a lot of injuries and the way we conditioned the body, Dan, as you well know, very linear based, very strength focused, very muscular based, didn't really fit to what we were doing. And, and it didn't fit to how we conditioned horses. So then also conditioning specificity. So when we looked at our game, I was getting a lot of injuries because of the fact that I was doing very much all linear. We weren't conditioning the body to go lateral transverse motion. And of course, the, the, the final thing that it really taught me was about threshold, about, you know, I was one of those guys who trained six days a week. You know, if you didn't get a kick, if you weren't playing well, you went for a 10K run. If you did get a kick and weren't playing well, you went for a 10K run. So, you know, I was taking the body way outside of threshold. And then, Coming from a large family of eight boys and one girl, my dad used to always say, you've got to have a trade. You know, you've got to be able to use these. If you can use these, you're never going to go wrong. So I, was, I became a plumber. And plumbing gave me the key, the freedom to be able to go from various towns to play football at various levels, which was really, you know, I think was very, very humbling because it enabled me to meet a lot of great people. But really what it taught me in the plumbing mode was problem solving. It taught me how to use my head and connect with my hands to create a solution. So that then when I followed my passion of fitness and health and wellness, what it created then was the ability to put all those together now and become really what SOM is all about is self-care tissue management. Wow. So that's and and when I when I tell people about you, uh, I, I the the fascinating part that I love to share is it started with the observation of horses and being able to uh, find dysfunction or find injury or because they can't talk, right? So there's signs and symptoms um, and you're basically working with uh, signs, what you're seeing. Uh, so fascinating, yeah. fascinating start. 
Thank you for that, Ian. Um, I want to jump right into a few questions and some of the things that I that I believe our listeners uh, would would love to learn from you. And the first sure. is uh, you've been in the business, I believe, a good uh, 30 years, 20, 30 years. I, I don't want to I don't want to. Three or four years. That's right. Okay, so three or four years. Uh, back three or four years ago, uh, when you when you first got started and you and you moved into the actual fitness world or the uh, health and wellness world, uh, you, there were a certain set of traits or characteristics or things that 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 a trainer or a health a coach uh, needed to know to be successful. And what I'm curious about is what were, you know, those traits that, that, that were so important 20, 25 years ago, which of those, what are those traits that continue to remain so important and will, will continue to remain so important moving forward? And I think even more so moving forward, Dan. So, you know, if I go back to the very start and the horses are where it really started, because the very first thing you had to do to be able to connect was listen. So I suppose if I take one step back further, my philosophy has always been horses and dogs have trainers, people have coaches. Uh -huh. Right? Horses and dogs have trainers, people have coaches. We're coaches. And coaches have these credentials, have these techniques, have these adapt adaptabilities, these characterizations that differentiate them or differentiate, differentiate all of us. We all have the ability to listen, some on various levels. We all have the ability to empathise, and empathise is really important. Having the empathy, and I think when we've gone through life and we've experienced pain, we've experienced um, breaking down, tissue breaking, we've experienced success and failure, I think empathy is something now that really comes becomes a major player. So. For someone like us going forward from what it was, the good coaches 20 years ago, 25 years ago, 30 years ago were like the good horse trainers. They listened, they had empathy, they never told you what to do. They guided you to where you needed to go. They gave you options on how you can get there. And I think, you know, when you look at the PDQ from PTA Global, this is the thing that I've taken out of everything that I've done with PTA Global over the years when we put together such an amazing tool because it allows you to listen, it allows you to connect and guide people based on their style, their level, their goal, but most importantly, their emotional anchor, right? So this is what's really, really powerful now going forward. And, of course, my, my, my key word, my, my fourth point would be empowerment. You know, good coaches empower people. Good coaches aren't frightened of losing their clients. Good coaches actually allow their clients, they give their clients the freedom to go where they need to go to get the best outcome where they are now. Because if you do that, you're building the relationship and the respect, which means the client is always going to come back to you. They're always going to be in your, in your, uh, in your network at some stage. And I think the beautiful thing about that is, when you have that ability to let people go, you build a network organically. And, you know, when I look at PTA Global, as I said, it was some of the best years of my life. And, and thankfully, you know, you're doing an amazing job carrying it on there, Dan. But this is what really trainers, coaches, whatever you want to call yourself. As I said, I call myself a practitioner coach. I focus on those four key elements. PTA Global focuses on those four key elements. And if you can practice them, if you have the courage to practice them and practice them daily, not just in your business, but in your family, in your everyday life, because it's our kids who need listening, empathy, guidance and empowerment more than anyone, because that then gives us the reflection of what we're doing as far as our coaching abilities go. I, I absolutely love that, Ian, and I love how you tied it into ourselves and our families. So something, uh, you know, the, the traits that make a prof uh, fitness professional, a coach successful are the same. Those same things are going to help them in their personal lives. And um, I, I, when I when I share PTA Global and I share uh, what what you all put together so many years ago, um, one of the, the two things that I that I talk about is number one, it absolutely changed me physically, which is a whole different story. But you, you're aware of it why I'm so passionate. 
but it has affected my relationships. It has affected in a positive way. It has helped me with friendships. It has helped me with my marriage. It has helped me with my relationship with my children and my coworkers. That's kind of a stretch you would think from fitness education. No, it's not. Um, no, it's, no, 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 no. it's hugely impactful. So thank you for sharing that. And Dan, can I just add to that? This is the importance of what we're talking today is it's about self-care, right? So when we talk about this, if we can't allow ourselves to feel the benefits of what PTA Global or SOMA or whoever it may be who's out there that we're, that we're involving and we're following, if we can't get the benefits ourselves, then really why are we doing this? Yeah, yeah, ab absolutely nailed it. Thank you for sharing that. Now, Ian, we, we had a very brief discussion before this call, um, and, and, and we talked a month or two ago about this webinar, and we're kind of talking about, you know, here's some things to share. Well, in the last two months, we've had some serious changes. Uh, <laughs> that's, yeah. yeah, that's kind of an understatement, right? But you started to mention the future of personal training. And how this COVID-19 uh, pandemic um, has affected how we're we're we're, we're uh, communicating with people now, and how we might be communicating more in the future. And you started to talk about that. I was wondering if you could take just a few minutes to share your thoughts and experience on that. Yeah, absolutely. And and Dan, I, I for me, I've probably never been more at peace. Now, let me put that into some sort of rationalisation. You know, so is my focus now, and that's really 60% of travel and face to face. Well, of course, that's gone. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a studio, I have, a, pra I have a, a practice where I bring people in. But you know what? I've been in that studio 21 years, seven days ago. I've been there 21 years. This for me now is a chance to reset my business. If I'm going to go forward, I want to now make sure that my business doesn't look the way it did 21 years ago. Because the story of where I've got to was then to hear. I don't want to go back there again and do another 21 years of that same stuff. Otherwise, this hasn't been beneficial. This hasn't been a positive. I'm certainly not going to get tissue management out of it because I'm going to actually start to put more stress on myself. So I really believe this is a chance for us to reset. All of us as coaches have created relationships. And if we can start to identify the relationships that we've created, if we can go back and evaluate our values, and that's really important to do. What are our values? And you know, I've got three values that I live by. That if I don't, if if my client doesn't and I don't trust them, it won't work. So trust is a really, really big one. If my client hasn't got a positivity and I haven't got a positivity towards them, it's not going to work. Then I'm that positive, my blood's be positive. So positivity is a really big thing for me. So the client and I have to have similar values. There must be a trust. There must be, there must be a positivity. But the third thing is there must be a team player. I'm a team player. That's why we put PTA Global together. We wanted to be part of a team, and we still are. Even though we might not be the faces that we are out there on the ground, you're the man doing the job, which we love because we're still part of that team. So whether you are delivering face-to-face, -face, whether you're delivering through a screen, whether you're delivering in some other medium, will make no difference. As long as you can identify your values, you are going to connect to the audience that needs to connect to you. And that then is going to allow you to be the best coach you can be to deliver what you need to deliver. And that's going to empower the clients, which I think is just powerful. It's huge. Wow. Very, very good. Profound. Profound. Um... I think so many folks right now are caught up, not that it's a wrong thing, but how do I market? How do I you know, leverage the technology? How do I write the workout, et cetera? All important things, but uh, you, know, you just talked about the most important thing, and that is the, the positivity and the trust and the team, teamwork. That's going to be what's going to drive that business, not whether they're using Zoom or go to webinar. So brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Um, Something I definitely wanted to make time for you to talk a bit about is play or game of games. Uh, now, you actually brought that to the industry back in 2006, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that and There's a lot of other things that you, you and PTA Global brought into the industry that we see in a lot of places now, and that's a good thing. 
Um, but you brought play. And when it was introduced to me, even by Rodney Korn, another co-founder back in, in 2010, that was a completely different concept for me. And now it's a big part of what we teach and what we share. Can you talk just a, a bit about play and the back so, of your background in it and, and its importance in, in the relationship and in, in the, the training aspect and the coaching? Dan, I guess because of my background, you know, when you work with horses, there's always a play concept. There's always how do I, you know, do I push them away? Do I bring them in? Do I feed them an apple? Do I feed them a cat? There's always a play concept. And it was interesting because the more that I went through life, the more I was one of those people who loved to laugh. I, I recognised the joy in my soul. The more I laughed, the happier I was, the happier I was, the better I worked, the better I worked, the more results, the better outcomes, the better solutions. And what I'm seeing now is, and what I was understanding back then was, I lived a life through sport that was through fear. I had a brother who was a champion footballer, broke his neck at the age of 18, was signed by a major club in the AFL, so broke his neck a week later. And of course, my aspiration was to be as good as he was. Now, having an artificial right eye, everyone told me, you'll never make it, you'll never make it, you'll never make it. So all of a sudden, it's that negativity, right? It's the negativity, it's the negativity. And we talk about trauma, we talk about bullying, we talk about all these things, they've been going on forever. Let's not think they're brand new things, they've been going on forever. Now, we have a choice here, and, and, and certainly don't think I'm, I'm downplaying trauma or people who have been bullied, I'm not doing that at all. What I'm saying is, sometimes we can start to unravel the seriousness of the effect it's had on their tissues over years by simply now giving them the freedom to move in a manner in which fits their style of movement. So what I started to recognise early on is that I spent, you know, 25 years of my semi-professional football career doing stuff that I didn't enjoy. So no wonder I was breaking down, not just from a physical, but from a mental and emotional. So without being a neuroscience guy, without being a behavioural guy like Bobby Capuccio, what I soon recognised was if I observed the human being in front of me, the more that I started to do things that created a freedom, that created a correct a connection. So in other words, if they came into the studio and we started to do some things that they enjoyed, for instance, if they were a surfer, I might bring a sand bell into a little challenge that they hadn't, we haven't even done an assessment, but I bring a 2kg sand bell and I just give them a touch it. Like, and I just give them to play with it in either hand and all of a sudden you could see their face change. And you can see their shoulders change position. You can see their breathing change. And then we might throw it between each other. All of a sudden, because I've introduced something that emotionally connects to them as a surfer, a sand bell has neoprene and has sand in it. Pretty important for a surfer, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, it was interesting because it was like, wow, by giving them something that they enjoyed. You know, a couple of my questions might have been, what did you do when you were growing up? Oh, I played Aussie Rules or I played netball or I played rugby. Most of the times that they played, they played with a leather ball. So I'd bring in a leather ball of some sort and all of a sudden you'd see things, their eyes had glisten and, and their pain had disappear. So it was really cool because all of a sudden we started through observation, through some of those things that I learnt with the horses, to be able to open up the people in front of us. So... In 2006, when, when we started teaching play in the States and the UK, and I'm, like I had people in Australia going, you know, are you on drugs? Why would you want to teach trainers to play? Like, seriously? And um, well, I guess it was for me is I wanted to see people laugh and smile because the more that I brought things in that I enjoyed, the, the, the harder I could go and the less pain I would have after my sessions. And we understand hormonally now wise, we understand from the brain wise, we understand emotionally, you know, from the gut wise. So it was really interesting because then 2009, Dr. Stuart Brown comes out and says, okay, here's some research on play, here's neuroscience on, I think it was 97% of people who were felons in the States who had created murder or various types of serious um, uh, uh, criminal uh, problems had never played. 97% had never played. Then I can't imagine that. Yeah. It was one girl in our family. All we did was play, but there was no iPads. <laughs> no. 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 What we're doing now is playing. What you're creating in your mind now when you were growing up as a kid and what you were doing and, you know, we might go rabbiting where we take our ferrets out and 
and you catch the rabbits and all of a sudden we lose the spirit. Look, it was all play, right? It was just the emotions of winning and losing and, oh, it was fantastic. Um, so then what was really cool, you know, with that research from Stuart Brown and with the likes of Bobby, Craig Harper, those sorts of amazing guys, they were starting to talk about, you know, we realised that the brain had mirror neurons. So if I was enjoying something and I could, you know, portray happiness, it brought happiness into them. And it's interesting because people come into my practice generally in some pretty beaten up states. So I didn't have to go through a strict assessment because they'd already been told they were broken. So one of the first things I'd do is find out what their hobbies were, what their sports were, and get them to play. So that once I could actually get them to de-stress, to emotionally feel safe, to the big one I feel then is to not be judged. Yeah. Then we could really see how they moved and what was affecting their movement. And, you know, from a coaching perspective and just guiding them through an awareness of, oh, what do you feel in the ankle or what do you feel in the knee or what do you feel in the hip or what do you feel in that shot? All of a sudden they could start to recognise and identify patterns, maybe significant times of their life that had created issues that they could then start to unravel at their speed. So it was it was pretty cool. Don't get me wrong, it was scary because people would say, well, what's your rationale? What's 2009 was easy. I'd say, here's the science, right? <laughs> but prior to that, it was a little bit challenging. But anyway, it, it worked and it's continued to work. And in fact, in these times now, and it was really interesting, Dan, I, I did a, a summit um, two weeks ago and um, there were some amazing people. Bobby and I were on it and Craig Harper was on it and and there were some amazing people on it. Anyway, we were talking about, um, I had to do a, 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 a 90 minute play uh, workshop on the Saturday. And one of the guys said, uh, Ian, but what do you do when you're an introvert? You know, what do you do? How do you get people to play? And I said, what, you mean like me? And he was gobsmacked. And I said, he said, but you're not an introvert. I said, yeah. I said, I can speak to a thousand people on a stage. I can coach 50 people at a time and get them all to get a positive outcome. But as soon as that job's done, I go into the peace and quiet of either my family or onto a horse, I kick a footy. I'm a person who loves to get away. I'm not a, you know, if the fitness industry is a great industry, Dan, if we didn't have people. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I would sooner go and work with horses and dogs, but that doesn't pay the bills, right? So it's really interesting. It's, I think, I think we all love play. We've just got to find our style, our level, talking about play. My little girl's got to go and say <laughs> goodbye to you. Yeah. This is Dan, so you've got to go to work with Mummy, haven't Hi. you? Not yet. Not just yet, okay. Well, can I keep talking to Dan? Okay. Say so, bye, Dan. Bye, bye everyone. Bye. <laughs> that's, that's the beauty right, Dan. This is the beauty of play. It's the it's the unstructured. We, we never know when something might just come left the field, just like it did then. Yeah. But I welcome it. I don't get fearful of it. Nothing's perfect. And I feel as coaches, when we can show people that there is no expectation of being perfect, there's just a solution and an outcome with a consequence. So a kiss on the cheek and a hug like that just boosts my immune system, makes my heart sing, gives me clarity, wants to share more with you. So these are the things. That's why play is so important. That's why play has such a powerful understanding of, for us, what this has done, what this, you know, time in the, in, in the world has done, is it's allowed me now to go and kick the footy with my boys. It's allowed me to work with my older daughter on SOMA and to communicate to her. It's allowed me to teach my younger daughter how to catch a netball or football better. Well, that's just creating more creativity in my my upper brain, my heart brain, and my gut brain to help other people hopefully move, feel, and live better. I love it. Now, for our listeners out there, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Ian, a footy is a soccer ball. A footy? No, a footy is, and I haven't got one here. It's in the car. I'm not going to leave the screen. It's an oval ball. It's a bit like a gridiron ball. Oh. It's made, yeah, it's made of leather, and it's the same shape as a gridiron ball, but it's not quite as pointy. So we tend to kick it in various, in, in, like in, not a tumble, we're a reverse tumble. We kick it like a torpedo, like the kickers do in, in gridiron. So we can kick it in any direction. If we mark it, 
then we've got time to pass it on somehow. So, no, no, it's a, okay. it's a pretty well, good gun. The great thing is it doesn't roll as far then, right? So no. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You go, on, you go on and have a look at it, the way it can bend and what it can do. And Dan, I can't do what my kids can do. Like it's really interesting, right? Um, when I coach the kids, when I, I was I've coached the under 16s a few years now, and, in, in, and I've, I'm now retired as a coach. But um, one of the things I used to do as a coach was I'd say to them, "All right, it's under 16s. They're 15 year old kids." When you come onto the green carpet, which is the grass, when you come onto the green carpet, I don't tell. And the kids would go, what do you mean? I don't tell. I don't tell you what to do. What do you want? What do you want out of this football season? Well, we want freedom. I said, fantastic. But what comes with freedom? Oh, responsibility. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> right? So what would happen, Dan, is I'd say, okay, I want... Two groups down that end, I want two groups down that end, and I want four people in the centre, and I want the ball to move. And they'd run out and they'd go, what did they say? What's the drill look like? What's, what have we got to do? And they wouldn't know, right? They'd be like deers in the headlight. And all of a sudden, three minutes would go past, and they would no one's doing any. And you come, right. So you want freedom. You want to be able to make choices. I'm not worried about the choices you make on the grass, I'm worried about the choices you make off the grass. Drugs, alcohol, fights, when people judge other people, I want you to make better choices. I don't use the words good, bad, I don't use the words wrong or right, because at the end of the day, no one wants to be wrong and no one wants to be bad. So in this situation, when you're on the green carpet with me, there is no right or wrong, there is no good or bad. There's just a decision that has consequences. Uh -huh. So. If you went out and I put two groups down that end and two groups down that end and I put a set of goals behind each of those groups, what would it look like? Oh, footy green. Ah, okay. If I put, put four people in the centre, what would it look like? Oh, it would look, look like the centre structure. Ah, so let's take that footy out now and let's move that ball over the footy ground like it would in the game, but don't make it structured. We well, all of a sudden you'd see these kids talking and blocking and handballing and kicking. But it wasn't about me telling them how to do it. It was about me empowering them. And this was one of the best things, Dan. The parents thought I was on drugs for the first six weeks because it was like herding cats. They were going everywhere. But by the end of the season, both times I've coached, and I tell you not to impress you but to impress upon you, we took kids. We had, we had some good kids in both sides. We had more not great kids. And the interesting thing was we won premierships in the league in both years not because I was a good coach, because they could make decisions under pressure that were inclusive of the team, not exclusive. And it was, it's, you talk about learning, Dan, you talk about as a coach learning, you know, that changed my life because you have to have the courage, one, to create play, to create happiness, to give people freedom. Then you have to have the courage to follow a belief. And if you can do that and you can see people change and not judge it, just see people change and see kids who have been on drugs get off drugs, kids who were fighters not fight, kids who were leaders now taking kids who aren't leaders and now developing leadership in both of them, that's when you know we're in the right direction. And that's why play has been so powerful for me and that's why I'm so passionate about it is because it changes people's lives. And those are perfect lessons for coaching adults. Perfect lessons. Love, absolutely love it. It's a great story. And now I know what a footy is. I, I can never get that straight. I can't get these the, the, the sports straight. Um, just a couple more things, Odie. I want to be respectful of everybody's time here. And I also want to remind the listeners out there, if you have any questions, put them in the question box and we'll be able to uh, address a couple of those here towards the end. Now, uh, Ian, you, you began as a, if, if I'm not mistaken, as a studio owner, uh, Odeon Movement, and from there uh, became very involved with PT on the Net, uh, a sister company to PTA Global, many of the same people, uh, and then co-founded PTA Global. And uh, kept, while still managing Odeon Movement in your studio, uh, and then co-founded Soma. And I'm wondering if you could just give kind of a, a quick, uh, rundown of how that went for you and then and tell us more about Soma as well. Perfect. So let's just keep this quick because as I said there's questions out there I want to 
I want to get to those. So 1999, I bought a studio of Richard Boyd, who just happened to own PT on the net. So I bought his studio. I did, had no intention, didn't know the area, didn't know the, the, the didn't know the whole business because it was a first time business owner, right? And I bought a business that was three rooms. It was a strength room, it was a cardio room, and there was a massage room. And it was only 70 square meters. So 250 square feet, right? So it's small. Anyway, 1999, 2002, Richard invites me over to the States and says, you've got to come and see what's happening. Rod Korn, Scott Hobson, Bobby Capuccio, Michelle Belcourt. And that's when we, we were actually doing some work. We'd gone to see NASM, right? So Mike Clark, all these guys. So that was life changing. So 2002, I come back from there, I gut the studio, I get rid of all my machinery, and I now focus on movement. Almost went broke. Not a smart thing to do then. So, <laughs> but what it showed me was these guys were on the same wavelength that I was. So I wanted, if I'm going to, if I'm going to do something, you have to have the courage to be able to say, you know what, I'm going to stamp it in a way that it's got to help people. And the studio I bought with had the greatest intention, but didn't have the application that I enjoyed. So Richard then asked me to continue along with Michelle Delcourt to keep consulting with PTN. So we were constantly, we did, I've done 33 of the 50 states in the US. I, we were doing at one stage in 14 days, we did 16 states doing workshops. It was just, it was nuts. We're on and off planes and amazing. So I had trainers working for me back in my studio. And so I could go away, do my stuff, hand my, my clients out to my trainers, get my clients back when I came back. So everyone was happy in that regard. So 2002 to the States, 2007 PTN sells. We had started something in PTN that we were still not satisfied that we were finished. So Bobby, myself, Michelle, Richard decided to put our foot in the water with PTA Global, reached out to Scott Hobson and Ronnie Korn, would you be interested? They said yes, fantastic. So we co-founded PTA Global. And I have never worked with a more amazing team, Dan. I mean, you know, you know the guys. Just humble, smart, just got this great empathy, this great, great compassion, just want the industry to be the best they can be. So uh, about 2008, 2009, PTA Global launches, global financial crisis hits, wasn't ideal. But... What we've left is a legacy now that you're carrying on beautifully because what we bought was behavioural change, functional anatomy, energy system development. Um, we looked at the tools for, for the tissues, specifically in the science systems and tools. And we also bought um, the specificity of how we can change tissue, like play, so, you know, fascial mobilisers. We had osteofascial release, self myofascial release with some adaptation. So amazing stuff that came out of it. So then we sort of all went back to our own areas about 2013 and um, then it was a situation where I reached out to Roddy in 2016 and it was like, okay, you know, I feel that we haven't really finished the journey. And I said, Roddy, everyone knows about, they've tasted fascial mobilisers, they've tasted osteofascial release, but I said, we need to show them the science, the research, the rationale behind what that's all about. So we created a company called Soma, Self Osteo Myofascial Applications. And Ronnie and I put our toe in the water to see whether, one, people wanted to know more about it, two, whether it really worked on a global scale, um, and three, whether it was sustainable. Well, the response has been fantastic. And you know, we've refined it now. So, you know, once again, it's about self-care, tissue management. So self, looking after us. The biggest thing I always found, Dan, was when I got injured, the stuff that I could do for people, I couldn't do for myself from a hands-on perspective. So that's why, you know, we use the roller, but we now started using it on the bony sections. And it was quite funny because in China we were doing some work over there and, and this young guy stands up and says, Mr Rodney, Mr Rodney, um, I read this paper back in 2002. It say that you know go to the bony sections. And Rod said, uh, he starts to smile, he said, uh, that would have been written by me. Yes, I do believe so. <laughs> so oh, the, 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 the interesting thing was, Dan, was the reason that I started going to the bony sections was because, one, as an athlete, I'm inquisitive about certain areas, but two, that my clients using SMR were getting, it was too painful for them. But what I noticed is when I was working from a hands-on perspective in the bony sections, 
tissue changed and the pain was less and the time you had to work there was far less. Right. So we developed self-myofascial engagement and self-osteofascial engagement, which means one works at the muscular tendinous region and the other works at the bone. Neither of them are right or wrong, just two different tools. And then we brought in self-fascial mobilisation, which is really motion or movement that is low speed, low tension, which now creates, uh, sorry, low force, which now creates low tension in the tissue, which allows the tissue to change, especially around the bony segments, but really targets the fascial system more. And that allows people to get this really small, subtle, rhythmical motion to change the tissue. And of course, finally, we've got what we call SPA, which is just self-positional activation. It's a way of stimulating the brain, the muscle and the nerve to reconnect with low force, longer duration that turns on tissue instantly. And it's, you know, combine that with some play, combine it with some other stuff we're bringing out. Stoma's pretty exciting. We're pretty happy that we can now bring out the rationale, the science, the applications, and, you know, Roddy and I are having a really, really fun time doing that. Wow, oh, that's brilliant. It's 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 definitely been fun to watch evolve from my perspective because I've been wowed over and over again by everything that all of the co-founders brought to you know to to PTA Global. And you think you know you think okay, can it get any better than this? And yes, indeed, <laughs> indeed, it continues to improve. Uh, well, it's the evolution, right, Dan? It's it's the evolution of what we do. Look, with PTA Global, we try to bring in the system science and tools, but we used to start off doing three day mentorships, right? And people would say three days is too long from work, but it's not long enough to, to learn it because you need more time. So you, what do you do? So we had to try and condense it because people want the stuff that they can apply instantly, right? So what we're finding, and I think going forward, what's really important for people to understand is knowledge is not going to be king. What's going to be king is application. And I, I feel what you're gonna find is learn, that's where online is going to be powerful, but we're then going to have events where we can now start to apply these, whether they're immersions or mentorships, where we can actually specifically spend more time on how we implement play, how do we, how we define styles, how we look at motion, how we can change tissue. And I think those events are going to bring together a large number of people, and that's going to make an even bigger shift in what's happening in the industry and around the world. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Ian. Uh, and now, for the listeners out there, what's the best way? And I'm actually looking at some of the questions coming in here. What What's the best way for them to learn more about uh, Soma? Okay, so we've got uh, www.feelsoma.com. That's our website. You can go there. We've got feel.soma um, on our Instagram or our Facebook page. You can go there. Uh, there's loads of content. What I'm doing at the moment is that I'm three times a week, I'm putting up content on our Instagram. There'll be some movement. There'll be some self-osteofascial, self-myofascial engagement. There'll be some quotes. There'll be some information. So we just want to give to people so they can experience it, take away, try it, apply it. The biggest thing is then you and I both know people get wowed easy. We call that motivation. It lasts for minutes. We want to inspire people to take responsibility for their own well-being. Because what we've learned in this time is that our well-being, our health is everything. And if we can't be healthy, how can we help other people to be healthy, have wellness, have longevity? So anyone, any one of those kind of platforms, we're on YouTube as well, Phil Soma. You can reach out to me at ian at philsoma.com. Any, any, any way is easy. Excellent. And, and so for the... Uh... The, the listeners out there, you're going to receive an email, at, like I mentioned earlier, about an hour after the webinar, and, and I have put the, the link to the website in there. Uh, you can also find it on ptaglobal.com under our partners. You'll see the logo that Ian has on his shirt right there, and that, there it is. And if you click on that, that'll take you there. And another question that we have is how do they connect with you, Ian? I assume that on that website, there's probably a, a place to do that. Yeah, if you go to the contact us, I'm more than happy to uh, to reach out with you. And, and that's the one thing Rodney and I pride ourselves in, like you, Dan, we return our emails. We yeah. focus on connection because it's everything. So um, it was actually funny. We were supposed to be coming to Wisconsin in May. That's the way the world works, right? <laughs> but don't worry, we, we can, we'll still connect with people. And there's resources that, that I have that, you know, there's programs, online programs, all sort of stuff we can get. So just 
reach out, contact me, more than happy to, to help direct, answer some questions. And, uh, and if there's anything we can do, remember, remember SOMA and PTA Global have a really strong connection because really PTA Global has the platform now that allows you to learn about the system science and tools, behavioural science and exercise, amazing tools. And if you want to then delve deeper into understanding the science and rationale behind some of those tools, SOMA fits beautifully. Excellent, excellent. Uh, I'm looking over again. If, if you see me looking away, that's because I have a second screen with my questions. Uh, another one here. I, I, I think you may know Dean Zweck. I'm not sure, Ian, yes. but yes, from the UK. So he wants to know, are you bringing SOMA to the UK? Well, funny, Dean Zweck. We were actually, uh, I was in talks with Kenny Manson, and yes, we will be bringing it too. At the moment, we're in a situation where we're just going to wait and see what's going on, but we certainly are bringing it to the UK. It's like everything, Dean, it's when you have something that's new and you're in a situation where you don't want to shoot the shotgun, you want to be able to make sure that what you're bringing, what you're delivering is is one concise, one effective, and three, you know, it, it is something that has solutions. So the beautiful thing about what we've got now is that when we come, we've got a 111-page PDF handout. We've got a 95-page Level 1 manual that when you come to Level 1, you have got resources, you have got the solutions that everyone needs. So short answer, yes, we're coming. Long answer, not sure when. <laughs> That's brilliant. And, Dean, I'm really glad to see you tuned in. Dean is an amazing lovely. ambassador for, for, for our brands and, and uh, for right. PTA Global uh, and a just for the, the, the coaching industry. Uh, let's see. Uh, one more. I'm just going to do a couple more. Uh, Ian, are you on LinkedIn? The majority, yes, of the, question, okay, majority of the questions here is they just want to connect with you, which is brilliant. So Perfect. we want to make sure Perfect. they know. Absolutely, yes. Uh, and how about um, next video? Yeah, they're all about connecting with you, Ian. <laughs> That's exactly what we want. Perfect. So what we can do is I've actually got a, a games video that I did from OD on Movement. So what I might even do is try and get that up on the Feel Soma um, website over the next two or, few, two or three weeks so that we can say, right, if you want to access to it, subscribe to it, whatever it may be, it's there. Um, that might help people through this time, especially with play. It's just a library. It gives you some amazing games, circuits and so forth that you can use. There's wellness circuits. There's uh, vitality circuits. There's games you can play. So I might try and get that up on the website um, just for a short term to help people with, with what they're doing and where they're going. Um, but LinkedIn, it's Ian Oduwire. You'll find me on Ian Oduwire. Um, I am starting to post on LinkedIn with the Soma stuff as well. So, But you can contact me. As I say, anywhere you'll, you'll find me, I'm more than happy to, to contact and connect with you all. Excellent, excellent. And the uh, the the email that you're all going to be receiving should be coming from my email. So feel free to, to message me if you didn't catch any of that, and I can connect you with Ian as well. Um, and that's about all we have time for. I I, I know you and I could uh, uh, well not you and I. I I ask the questions and listen. If there's anything I've learned uh, from PTA Global, it's just you know be quiet and listen. Uh, if you're if you're talking, you're not listening. If you're talking, you're not learning. Uh, Ian, thank you so much for your time. Uh, you know it's an early morning for you. I know you sandwiched it in between you know your own work day. Uh, it's been a real honor, as always, to to connect with you. And and for those of you that are out there listening, you know, Ian said that he likes to have fun. And uh, I'll tell you that I've I've never been in the presence of somebody that made me laugh so hard it gave me a headache. Um, and it just happened not long ago in China, having dinner with with Ian. I my head was throbbing, uh, just pounding because I'd been using the muscles in my face uh, to laugh so hard. So uh, do do connect. He is absolutely a brilliant person to be around. Uh, remember, you're getting an email uh, within that email, a link to Ian's website, as well as instructions on how to register for the exercise of stress management credential. You'll get to see a lot more of Ian talking in there and uh, instructing and learning from him. And I do hope that uh, we are able to do this again uh, uh, many, many times. Thank you all listeners for joining yeah. us. Uh, uh, very, very grateful for your time. I've got some messages in here where some people are watching you and it's two o'clock in the morning where they are. So uh, wow. truly, truly. Uh, yeah, uh, I'll sleep because I'll have nightmares after seeing this head, right? <laughs> so. 
<laughs> thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, thank you to all of the team at PTA Global to help make this happen, including Israel Allen, our education director, who's doing a fantastic job, you know, uh, spreading the the message. Uh, and thank thank you, Ian, for everything you've done for us. Not a problem, Dan. And Dan, can I just close by saying, in this time, guys, and I truly mean this, it's it's the education from T PTA Global, SOMA, whoever you're following. Practice what you do. You need to be positive. You need to breathe. You need to move. Super, super important. Okay. Can you say goodbye to Dan? <laughs> so, please, <laughs> so please, please use this as a positive. Use this as a reset time, and let's let's make this industry a far better industry on the other side of whatever happens from here. Thank you, Dan. All my heart. Thank you for carrying on the PTA global message. Message. Thanks, Israel. And I look forward to seeing you somewhere in the great industry that we have in the future. Thank you. I have nothing I can add to that. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Bye-bye.